prepared yet. We need to try and pick off the units as Look at the shields on the markers. What is up, folks? Welcome to another matchup here for the Winners Round 1 IPL Season 2. I'm DJ Wheat from OneMoreGame.tv and so excited for this matchup. We have a North American streaming superstar, Destiny, now on Team Complexity, going up against Sake, who is from Alt Attacks, Alternate Attacks. He is a German player, and we really have a clash of North American versus Europe here for this best of three matchup in the winner round one. We've got Root Destiny spawning up in the Northeast position as the Purple Zerg, and uh, forgive me, Root uh, has actually been acquired by Complexity, so he is still rocking that tag in-game. Uh, might say it a couple times, but you should know uh, he is a part of Complexity Gaming now, as that acquisition was made by Complexity uh, not too long ago. We've got Sock now spawning in the southwest position as the Red Protoss, and Sake is, uh, to me, just such a an amazing player. We got the pylon down on the low ground. Some of my most memorable, memorable games from Sake, um, or just in StarCraft in general, have been from Sake. There is a game uh, which is uh, Sake versus Jinro that was probably the most epic post released game that I have ever seen. It is a matchup between Sake and Jinro on Desert Oasis of all maps. And it goes a full, like, 54 minutes. It's an absolutely amazing matchup. But he is a very, very focused player. He's got his forge going down first with the forge expand build, waiting to get 400 minerals, and then he'll drop that nexus. But uh, a, a player with a lot of stamina, player with a lot of intelligence. He makes great, great decisions. And I'm really excited because he's going up against what I would consider a fairly unorthodox Zerg player in Destiny, but also a player who I believe uh, has a lot of potential. Now, he's going to go for his hatch right here. Probe went inside the base. Didn't look like he was going to block. It did come out a little bit later, waiting for that 300. Now gets it, but with the lings out, he'll be able to get rid of that probe. Actually, Probe does survive that, but the hatchery goes down. And, uh, you know, Destiny, he's a North American streamer. He's uh, really been trying hard to train up. Of course, he is a part of complexity, and that does put him at sort of a pro status. But I think that he's looking for that tournament where he can really, really demonstrate his skills and uh, his ability to be considered a top tier player and I you know wish him the best of luck in that I think he's a very very entertaining and incredibly creative player as well he sort of is one of those players that will do things that people tell him he cannot do uh, and I mean in game I mean if someone says well you can't do this by you know you building this unit and he will try to prove them wrong uh, very very interesting player so we've got an incredible matchup going on here let's take some focus and see what we've got going up in this matchup now Sake decided to go with a forge first fast expand the nexus going down going to get another simulator here cybernetics core down as well now there are a couple of holes right here uh, I believe there's a hole right here as well uh, but with the cannon he's going to hope that that's going to be enough for defense over here he's got two gases going so we'll see what we're going to see uh, or what sake is going to come up with next as the ling makes its way down he does have coverage of the bottom Zelnaga tower and we will see a spine crawler going up here for Destiny. Always a must-have for... He canceled it. He stopped it. As I'm about to say, always a must-have for players. And it might just be because he has scouted with his Ling. He sees that there's no initial threat. And uh, I do like that. But in an amazing Protoss fashion, we've been seeing this a lot versus Zerg lately. And that is the Stargate going down for Sake. It's one of these things that can be kind of scary for the Zerg. Because when you have that Forge Fast Expand, you are denying your opponent vision of that right there. So they don't know what you're doing inside the base. They don't know how many gases you've got, how many gateways you're sitting on. If you're going Stargate, maybe you're going Templar Tech and you're going to throw some DT 
tease at him before the lair's getting started. Is uh, There's nothing there uh, to help out in that regard. And so it can be a very kind of scary thing that will likely see a Void Ray pop out of here right away. Uh, typically, uh, Phoenix coming out can still be good uh, because it can do some Overlord damage. But if you get this early advantage of your opponent not knowing that the Stargate is down, and then you can get a Void Ray out, it will allow you to get a Phoenix out by the time the Void Ray actually starts to do some harassment on the base. And, of course, that can be good for lifting clean queens as well. Now, we are going to have this Overlord making his way all the way around from Destiny. But as you can see, well, he was uh, originally going for the main. It looks like he is now going to head off and uh, check out this uh, uh, natural. And he will spot the Stargate uh, with that first Void Ray on the way out. Let's take a look and see how long it is going to take here. Uh, for his vision to unfold that and I, because the reason why we're looking at this he sees the chrono boost something and he's going to see the stargate now the question is is what is the immediate reaction we already have a double evo chamber going down here for destiny and he's put up uh several spine crawlers unfortunately what he really needs is a spore crawler we don't see one here in the mineral line right yet and based off of where he is right now uh and here we got the uh, where did our void rig okay it's all the way up here already um so we do have a queen we have another queen building no so uh there are three queens out there's the spore crawler right here at the main it's a little bit further in the void ray so far looks like it's just going to take out some smaller units we got a uh zealot making his way around just kind of checking things out checking for that expansion a second void ray joining up and then we'll have the phoenixes coming out after that however a lot of time has been given to destiny in order to be able to defend that we see that there's two sport crawlers already in the base and that is instantly going to be a big problem here for these void rays meanwhile we're getting an infestation pit coming out right now so really going ling he doesn't even have speed yet it's a little surprising and the queens are going to start to go to work this queen should pull this uh, Void Ray back. He's going to go ahead and move that spot. Spore Crawler. And we are going to get a Transfuse on the One Queen. So that will be thwarted just a little bit. And now with that six second root time from the Spore Crawler. It's a pretty nice little utility that the Zerg has. More gateways being added here by Sock. Okay. As he's kind of realizing that he's going to be able to do minimal damage here. He is going to go in for yet another attack. Here we got these spore crawlers, but with double void ray, going to be able to work on these queens. He's full shielded back up. He's going to go ahead and root to the back of the line here. Queens could be picked up, but he's got to be careful about that. And he's going to pull out just in time for that spore crawler to finish burrowing. He's not going to overcommit here. Um, he is not going. Uh, he's just pretty much pathogen glands. He's going to start getting his initial investors out here. And here we're going to see the phoenixes thought they were going to try to go for a lift, but not going to happen. Looks like speed is finished for the Zerg. And are the gateway units starting to mass here for Sake? We are seeing a little bit. Already some creep being dropped over here to prevent this third. However, it looks like an Overseer is being made. And it looks, uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to see the Protoss Air Force finally give up. And after two Void Rays and four Phoenix, it is going to be thwarted. Do we have any more units coming out of the Stargate? The answer is no. Even though we have the pylon going down here, it will be spotted by a Zergling. Phoenix come over, take care of that. Red Mist right there. And unfortunately, that Overseer is also going to meet an untimely demise as well. Not able to do much of anything. And we will have a Ling possible, a huge Ling counterattack. Unfortunately, the Phoenixes can't build, uh, lift all those up. And the Templar tech, uh, excuse me, the uh, Templar archive is just finishing up now. So we will be able to get those High Templar out. And the, here we have some links going inside. He's going to get cut in half by a force field. A lot of sentries there with a lot of energy. He will deny this third from going up temporarily, however. One sentry on the backside. Not sure what it's doing out there. Void Ray is going to go back around the map. They could do some harassment on this third. It is not defended by air quite yet. Sp creep spread fanning out now for destiny as he is completely saturated his uh, natural wanting to get to work here at the main spreading even more zerglings out to check all locations across the map we got plus one ground weapons going down for sake and he is 
warped in a lot of high templar now the reason that protoss players warp these in so far ahead of time is so that they can mass as much energy uh, as they can possibly get the more energy that those templar have in those engagements the better off those are going to be now a lot of lings out for destiny right now 20 more lings on the way he's getting burrow uh, that could mean that we'll have some Infestor harassment, or he might just block some expansions. He could go in for another denial of this third base, and there's not that big of an army here. The Lings are going to make their way in, get a surround here on the Nexus, and start going to town, but they're going to have this Protoss army to deal with. Is he just going to go? Oh, the force fields around the Nexus to save it, and Sake will allow that Nexus to live up a few Lings trapped in a force field jail there and the nexus does go up so now oh my gosh a lot of infestors moving out across the map and they will be caught there by that void ray however they're not even reacting at all destiny has given away that he has a large attack coming forward and remember these high templar can of course feed back the infestors so watch for that as well he can also use the storms going to Morphin a few Archons here. I'm just curious how Destiny's going to engage on this, if he's just going to go straight up Fungals. And he does, but double feedback's going down on those Infestors. He's going to need to chain those Fungals together. Another feedback goes down. Force Field's coming out, and now the Void Rays targeting those Infestors. A few Infested Terrans are thrown out, and even though the army size of uh, Sake has gone down, that is going to be, oh my goodness, so many feedbacks going off there. And that is going to be stopped as we have more Archons being morphed in. Should be able to make quick work of those Lings, of course, with their splash damage. What are you doing? And another Infester is going to die. A lot of units losing their lives here for absolutely no reason. Now, keep one thing in mind. Destiny, although losing a few Infesters, I think may have lost less. He only lost Lings pretty much in that battle. And if we bring down the units lost, you know, it's about the same. In fact, Destiny has lost less. Just, you know, uh, obviously a higher quantity, but it was not that large of an investment to get in. However, the scary thing here is that we are seeing this fourth base go down for Sake already. And I think that's going to be a very, very uh, scary thing for the Zerg player. There are so many Infestors out right now. Ventral Sax is being uh, researched by Destiny. Some Roaches are coming out. Deal with some of these ground units. And where else is Sake going from here? Let's check out his main. He's got his uh, Templar Archives. We've seen those in action. We've got, of course, the Twilight Council. Blink is done as well. So he's opting to not go with Colossus. Go with this Air Templar and Ground Army mix. Meanwhile, Destiny going with very heavy Infester, adding in some Roaches, of course, keeping those Lings up as well. The worker count right now, 70 across the board for both these players. Going to throw down some Spine Crawlers and a Spore Crawler there. Try to protect that. And is he going to go in yet again? I'm more or less curious about what Destiny plans to do with the Ventral Sack. He is going to Hive already and a big Cannon Wall finishing up here for Sake. What is he going to do with Hive? Uh, not sure I've seen a Spire go down yet. So maybe uh, just those Zergling upgrades. Get those Adrenal Glands. Make those Zerglings even more devastating. Looking at the uh, upgrades, we do have just a Carapace for the Zerg. While well, we have plus one attack for Sake. Kind of canceling uh, one another out. And oh, a bunch of probes are going to get taken out on the transfer. Not going to be a huge amount. But the Podos is going to... Puff its chest here a little bit. We're going to see some feedbacks going down today. Some good storms coming out. These infestors are getting feedback left and right. So many are dying at full energy. And although the fungals are going down, the infestors are not being absolutely effective here. However, the roaches powering through here and able to do a lot of damage to this Protoss army. However, oh, there's the Void Ray Neuroparasite to keep it from doing what it needs to do. Holding it in place while the infested Terrans do their job. And although the Protoss army is going to clean this up yet again, both players trade up. Wow. I've got to give Destiny some props. I really like that whole uh, Neuroparasite to Void Ray while it is taken out. And he's going to go in for another attack. Feels like maybe he's done enough damage here at the front, y'all. Uh, front door. 
has those investors and trying to get a little bit more energy, knows that this base exists as well. And what is he going to do with Hive? Is it just for upgrades? I think he's got to have a plan beyond that. And here's one plan. Going to go in for the bust. Not targeting those pylons. Going to go immediately after the cannons. Going to throw away a lot of supply here to make this happen. And will back off. Might get cornered here by this army. Is split sort of right down the middle and will get out of there. Doesn't have the Infestors to fight, but the High Templar are nowhere to be found either. So the Infestors might actually be much more effective. Initial Zealots will be taken out. Fungal's going down on a lot of those Stalkers. Finally, the High Templar's coming in and dropping a big storm there on top of the Roaches. One, two, three is the Roaches will literally just power on through that. They're taking out an awful lot of Blink Stalkers here. But more come in to try to save the day. And once again... The retreat from the Infestors must happen. How many gateways uh, do we have Sake sitting on? There's six there. Seven. Eight, nine gateways right now as he seems to really be reinforcing quite nicely. There we do have the Adrenal Glands coming out for the Zerg. Now, uh, we don't see this upgrade so often, but I feel like this is coming very quick. Basically, if someone goes to Hive and they're still using Lings... They're going to get Adrenal Glands. Um, you can see it right there. Uh, increases the attack speed of the Zergling 20%. Now, if you combine that with uh, plus 2 to melee, plus 3 to melee, they become incredibly, incredibly effective. Right now, just plus 1 to melee. The Observer is going to come over and, uh, so far, really long for game form game here. I have not seen anything happen with the Ventral Sacks. We have a small force here in the middle by Sake. It's not a huge force. I almost wish I could highlight and then it can tell me how much supply, actually, of a force that is. That's such a good idea, Wheat. Blizzard should totally do that. Oh, nice fungal on the Observer. A great way to get rid of those without uh, huge cost. And we have some Stalkers that are kind of just making their way around the map. They could blink down here and do a lot of damage. There's absolutely nothing here to protect this at all. Some Lings just rolling around as we have another Nexus going down. Another base in full production, and here we go. The Lings are going to go out. The Adrenal Gland is going to be finished up. Storms will be incredibly effective versus these Lings, but he's also going to have to drop them on top of his own unit. If he does, it throws them on the Roaches instead, right on top of the Roaches. Roaches move inside, making it so those Storms will also affect the Protoss army, and those Roaches are hurt so bad. And, you know, Tunneling Claws would help so much, but there's an Observer back out here yet again. He tries to get the heal off. That one Immortal doing a lot of damage. And once again, we have a trade. Looking at the lost, almost 20,000, but still Sake with just a little bit more investment of his army. There are a few Stalkers continuing the harassment up here at this North Expansion. We're getting Chitinous Plating for the Ultras. And are we going to see some Ultra lists come out? This is already a pretty awesome game. We're 24 minutes in, and I really don't see any sort of clear um you know victor yet or possible well these dts are going to be coming out pretty soon the dark shrine going down plus three weapons for the protoss he's going to get this base up as well but actually the more destiny takes these bases on the side you know they're going to be definitely hard to defend i mean look at how easy it would be for sake to come over here and take out this base and he doesn't even know it uh has no idea about the vision, but has a pretty good idea where he's going to go next. So I'll probably start checking those uh, locations very shortly. Um, extended Thermal Lance finally coming out, so switching over some Colossus tech. There's a gateway that needs to be opened up. Going to be getting this expansion as well. Cannoning up because he's got the resources that he can, and here is going to be a big test of the late game Zerg as we have... Uh, oh, he didn't spot them heading out. And we are going to have some DTs moving over. Now, probably not uh, the worst base to, to lose right here. Unfortunately, he's going to be able... Oh, he's going to be able to kill a lot of drones. Meanwhile, there's another attack over here. We're going to have Zealots coming in. An army's going to attack from the back. And Fester's going to get some great fungals off. We'll get that Colossus there to help out. And there are the storms going down. But we'll see... Oh, he 
can he storm him? He can't storm him, but the High Templar will go down as well. And that was a huge victory for Destiny, sitting at 169 right now. The Protoss at 125. But those DTs continuing to hack away. He's trying to take away the hatchery. Oh my gosh, he gets the hatchery just as he himself dies. And that base will not be mining. Meanwhile, we have more attack going on here, using these infested Terrans as sort of a wall. But there are just too many cannons. The funny thing is, is there's only two pylons. This third one down here getting a little bit of coverage there. And he can't seem to get it done. High Templar going to get fungled and taken out. Destiny playing a very, very impressive style of Zerg. Now has these Ultras out. Continuing his expansions. Sake continuing with the High Templar. Getting the Colossus out. Throwing a few DTs into his mix as well. He is currently sitting at 0, zero 3 on the upgrades. I'm a little surprised by that. And we're going to have a lot of spine spores thrown down here. Certainly money to be spent, but actually Destiny staying very, very low as we've had a lot of active engagements here. So many Infestors, a few Ultras. Now the question is, will the Ultras be able to actually go in? And oh, will he spot? Oh, he didn't manage to get it with his Overseer. However, he's going to move over. And he can go ahead and fungal. There the Overseer comes back and he will take out that one DT. Well, there's nothing over there anyway. Meanwhile, creep being spread. More DTs out on the hunt. Looks like that base will not be rebuilt. DT taken care of over here. And really kind of this lull in the game, if you will. As both players kind of gearing up for what's next. Taking a look, starting to get new upgrades. Yes, armor starting to come out now for the Protoss. And really the only thing about Sake that I'm a little surprised about is the fact that he is not... Let's take a look at it. He's, he's starving on gas a little bit. He's got plenty of minerals. Um, and that is one area when you have this many bases of Destiny, you can just take gas. He's uh, got an extra gas making over here. But uh, I feel like a double forge right now, but instead kind of double roboing it out. Of really, really gas heavy at this point with a very diverse army. However, he can handle a lot of different situations. The Ultra is starting to move forward. And a couple of Stalkers going to see them. Ultra is going to go ahead and move back. Fungal! No, he's not going to get the Fungal off before they blink away. Another base going down for Destinies. We are in for the long haul, ladies and gentlemen. Already at the 30-minute mark. Still seeing no clear evidence of a winner. Charge being upgraded. And here we have the first Broodlords coming out. There will be five in total for Destiny. And I have to imagine that based off of the army I'm looking at here and the army that I'm seeing here and the amount of hatcheries that are on the map, I'm going to forecast a win for Destiny. However, anything can happen. Broodlord's going to get some initial hits off. That was really scary because actually he could have uh, blinked forward and taken a few of those out. And are we going to have an engagement trying to get those Infestors in as well? Colossus doing a good job. Storms being dropped down on the Roaches. Up come the Hydras. A lot of Broods coming in from the back. Going to fungle the Immortals. Excuse me, uh, Neural Parasite, the Immortals. And it does look like Zerg is going to be able to win this, but he is neural parasited so many units. He's got to make sure that he can clean those up as well. And he will go ahead and eliminate them and is left again with a uh, 166. We do have a couple of Zealots and a Dark Templar over here doing some work. And uh, they will get taken out by this army. Smart move, rooting those drones over there. A lot of Ling streaming in right now. And this is pretty much the standing army of Sake at 164 right now as he continues to warp in units. A lot of roaches coming out. Ling's trying to put together those units that he can't really uh, afford right now. But he is starting to get back up on gas and minerals. Ling Roach Army might move in here. Soften this one up a little bit. Don't see any High Templar anymore for Sake. That could be one of the big uh, winning pieces of this puzzle there's still that one dt being a real pain in the butt here for destiny as i destiny's just kind of all over the place um and not in a bad way uh, i mean sake trying to go out and harass a little bit three stalkers here dt there Destiny trying to stay up. And let's keep a close eye on the income tab because even though there are more bases for Destiny, 
his drone saturation is very few and far between in between uh, you know in between all of his bases so the protoss right now with far more um harvesters than his opponent and that could have eventually become a problem later on if you're not pulling in the same economy might be able to over outproduce and we have a lot of zealots going up here to do uh some damage here to this expansion that has just been put up and destiny can't afford to lose that however this army is split up a little bit more high templar added here to the army of sock hey eh? <laughs> five brood lords bunch of infestors tons of roaches roaches are at three one right now and is he going to attack this expansion he is Watch out, those infestors gotta be getting some fungals off. There's a few of fungals. Are we gonna get any neuroparasites? We're gonna have feedback down. Storm's coming out. However, a lot of those units already killed there by the Zerg army. And I do think that he'll be left with quite a lot. However, this one Void Ray could be a big problem. He's gonna have to drop out some infested Terrans, and he does. He manages to chase that Zerg army away. Look at that one Ultra just cleaning up that base. We'll have a fungal and a takeout of that Void Ray few probes getting killed here however look at this force doing a lot of damage over on the other side of the map destiny down to 37 drones sake at 52 probes right now neither of them producing either as right now it's sort of a battle of the army and who's going to do what to who that ultra will take out basically all of those probes and a few of the zealots but where are the major mining bases let's take a moment to look right now this one's starting to go down here for destiny this one is up but it has been harassed the entire game probably still going to continue to get harassed right now this one is sort of up for sake he's got this one up heavily saturated with quite a few minerals left nothing is natural nothing in his main this one almost dead too where does he expand to can't really expand over here. Going to have to take some time to do that. Can't really expand over here. That's really, really far away from the base. And uh, Zerg might be able to get there quick enough. So with DT control, he's going to have to start thinking about what units can I use to actually win this right now. And he might be making a big push here. No. Got more Broodlords coming out. Uh, Roach is going to heal up right now. Some Corruptors coming out to hopefully deal with those Void Rays. And he might try to secure an expansion up here. I think the problem is, is he's going to have to stay here to secure it. But is that even his intention? I do not think so. More units being warped in here for Sake. 200, uh, almost nearly maxed for Destiny. Sake at 160. He's got a very diverse army. How's his upgrades doing? He's still at 1-3. Hasn't been keeping up on those. And I seriously cannot believe... That no one is making drones right now. 37 to 52. Sake with a huge lead there. Another DT is going to slip into the mix. He might go after those infestors. Yes, he will. Two chops. Got to react. Oh, my God. Another infestor going to go out. And there he will quickly die. But two infestors lost at this point in the game. That is really bad. Another base going to go down here for Destiny. Although, in my opinion, he needs drones. I mean, this base, well, no. That is out. This is almost out. Destiny's sitting on like 600 minerals right now and whatever is left here. A few thousand. So he's actually sitting on just a little bit more. We're going to have an engagement in the middle as it looks like uh, attacked out of position there. Sake taken a little bit by surprise. Casting those defensive storms and the retreat of these units. Might want to go back and burrow those roaches. Cannot replenish this entire army. He needs those broodlords doing a lot of damage in there. They are going to do the chase down on those zealots. Colossus turn around to try to help. There we see the burrow on the roaches. Quickly healing up as you watch them go over to green. And he really needs that. That's a huge ability right now. A one high templar gets sniped off. And any sort of kills that he can do right now are going to be incredibly beneficial. Now, is he going to go try to take out one of these bases? It's going to be, he's got to take out just the pylons. Broodlord's very, very slow. Do have this army moving over. Oh my God, I think Sake's going to win this. That is a pretty beast army. Oh no! 
The Broodlord's getting caught. This is a huge power play here for Sake. We have some Hydras coming out. And these Broodlords are going to get devastated before they can do their maximum amount of damage. DT's also in the mix, and a huge storm goes down. And that storm may just very well wipe out the entire army of Destiny. And for the first time, he will find himself very much behind. At 77 supply, still only 35 drones to his name. And as this army moves forward, it consists of units that will absolutely die to these Colossus, to these Void Rays. It's getting out more Infestors. Done deal. Losing those Broodlords was such a huge power play for Sake. Huge. So, taking a look. How quickly is Destiny replenishing himself? He was at 70 last time, now he's at 88. Got another Nexus going up here. Sake suddenly realizes that he might have a chance here. His army is huge. It's on a 150 army. Let's take a look at that right now. 5,000 to 1,700. I think that pretty much tells the tale. Some great engagements by both players. Unfortunately... I think that Destiny might have his last stand here, at least for game number one. This is a best of three, and I won't give up on Destiny quite yet, but I got to tell you, Sake handled all this very nicely. Really uh, of note how he reincorporated the Stargate play when he needed to. Used, uh, finally, finally really using feedback super effectively. On the same token, saw Destiny, Neuroparasite, a few of those uh, mortals which is very, very nice, uh, using those against the Protoss army to eliminate some of those armored units. But at this point, his army just looks so menacing compared to what we have over here. Another DT comes in. He's going to have to fungle him. Oh, he's going to take on another Infester. And Destiny is seriously on his last leg as we have a lot of mining coming out here. And still, no additional workers being made does make me a little sad, I'm not going to lie. And at this point in the game, it can be really difficult to keep track of how many workers you actually have. But pretty much nothing but units coming out. And Destiny has to make nothing but units because he cannot fight this army with what he's got. Not even the most insane, ridiculously awesome fungals will save him in this battle. Jones going to head on over. He's going to throw forth these spine crawlers. That will help out a little bit here. But is this going to be the last stand for Destiny in what has certainly been a long game? Here comes Sake moving forward, Neuroparasite, but it's not going to matter. This army, despite getting fungal, is going to completely rip through the remnants of this Zerg population. And Destiny is going to lose everything here. A GG is inevitable. And there it is as Destiny and Sake play a massive 45-minute game. And Sake comes out on top. Destiny... I thought he had it in that battle, but Sake just uh, powered through. An amazing player. And coming up next is going to be game number two. I'm DJ Wheat. More IPL Season 2. Winners Round 1 coming at you.